<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Gooms Podcast. This podcast is brought to you guys from Pretty Boy Ugly World. Me and Hager rocking the tees in this pod. The fits are dope, the designs are dope, and everywhere you can find them is in the description. Enjoy the episode. Push! That's one thing that I'm struggling with at the moment is I'm very... With I actually, so I keep almost like a diary on my notes. Like whenever I have a thought, I write it down. And literally a few days ago, I actually wrote it down. I was like, I feel like everything that I'm doing at the moment, I'm not happy with. Like it's not, it's not that I'm trying to be perfect, but I'm looking back at work and I'm just not completely happy with it. I don't know if it's in the what, phase of in life. What respect, my bro? Happy in what respect? It doesn't. It. I'm just uh when when I put work out or I finish work, I, I finish a project, the client or whoever I've done it for. Uh, obviously, there is some clients that want things changed. Yeah. Not, not everything's always as happy as they want it to be but yeah. i'll put a piece of work out on my instagram and i'll get like 20 messages of people saying how good it is yeah uh and like oh wow bro like you should be really proud of yourself but like i would have finished that yeah and i would have i would have gone back and done five i would have exported that video five different times after and watched that on my phone and not been completely happy with it and this is the beautiful thing about growth that a lot of people don't talk about right i think when you're truly destined for something superior to where you're currently at you're never going to be satisfied what you can't do, however, is not deploy gratitude whilst wanting more and wanting to create better work. And there's a famous quote from a, um, a bodybuilder called Jay Cutler, who was Mr. Olympia, I believe, maybe seven or eight times. He said, part of being a professional bodybuilder, an elite professional bodybuilder, is having the utmost understanding and respect that you're never going to be satisfied with how you look. Wow. And as long as you're satisfied with that, mm -hmm. you can be your best. Well, I yeah, think yeah. if you, if you, you do, do become sexy, satisfied, right? you become complacent also, in right. a sense. Oh, of course, but there's two ways to move towards something, gentlemen. Okay, there's an, a constructive way, okay, and there's a destructive way. A lot of times, perfectionism is destructive because yeah. it prevents you from actually excelling because you want everything to be perfect. Whereas, right. from a consumer standpoint, people buy into growth more than they do perfection because mm. they respect the growth of a brand for example yeah, yeah. that's one thing that we've seen from when we were away in in spain yeah. we watched our first episode and, you and when our first episode came out we were like bro everything looks sick yeah, everything yeah. sounds sick but looking back on it me and h were just like we don't look as comfortable on camera the topics of conversation aren't to the level as they are now the way that the visuals are set up, we weren't even shooting in 4K when our cameras of course, can shoot in 4K. Yeah, so know, our understand. clips don't... Like errors. Li little <laughs> things, little tiny, yeah. tiny things that the consumer probably wouldn't notice and probably think, oh, this looks great like we did. But now 18 weeks down the line, we look back on that and think, hey, look how far we've come. It's beautiful. And if you have the mindset of perfection from the start, mm -hmm. you would not have this level of gratitude and appreciation now, mm -hmm. which is inevitably yeah. the fundamental part of the process. Mm -hmm. We do it for this feeling. We do it for the growth factor. It was, there's no point. Yeah, we yeah. don't do it for finances. We do it because we get a feeling of satisfaction that nothing else can give us. And without the variable of wanting perfection, we can't have that growth factor. Yeah. So we just enjoy it. Look, there's a Will Smith, he says, I think in a quote, he says, fail forward. Just keep failing forward. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And yeah. perfection is not part of fucking success. I think that's, um. I've, we've actually been rolling. I think that's a lovely way to start the pod. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody <laughs> welcome to the fucking <laughs> road. Yeah. Everybody the people on the camera see the cheeky wing that I got. <laughs> <laughs> of big reason. Like. Yeah, so, hey, know. take it away. Everybody, welcome back to the Goons Podcast, episode 18. Uh, as you guys can probably already tell from that that start of the pod, this is going to be a good episode, man. we yeah. got Big <laughs> Reese, if you want to introduce yourself, man. Reese Davis, one half of the Terrible Twins. I've got a lot to say. Um, I've done an awful lot in my life in regards to um, competing at the highest level in regards to boxing. I win the ABAs. I've had a life full of interesting chapters. I'm sure we're going to discover it now on the call. So I appreciate you all watching me, listening to me. What do you, um, obviously, the, your kind of portfolio of what you do is pretty stacked. Yeah, if you yeah. just want to explain that to everybody. That's yeah. the same as, as as the weights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they stacked. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the question. So I appreciate you invite me on okay so i've been like a coach a mindset coach my whole life from the age of 16 okay now i grew up in an area in coventry where we didn't have anything mm -hmm. and to me the only thing i could really work on is the top four inches because i had no resources around me and being brought up and i was massively interested in personal development and i was given my first book at 15 paulo coelho the alchemist okay by a guy who was mentoring me okay so it was my goal at a very young age to be in a position sometime in my life where I can assist people in moving through life based on, I said, not qualifications at the time because people around me had qualifications, but I thought they were shit. 
Yeah. Based on my own, you understand? Yeah. Based on my own fucking experience to get through what it was I was going through. Mm -hmm. So crime, selling drugs, getting arrested 20, 30, 40 times. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Running the doors. All the things that I worked really hard to get away from. And whilst I was getting away from it, I was blogging my life and figuring out the internal frameworks that I was utilising to grow. I can imagine in those in those different lines of work as well, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, I've soul searched forever. And, I, you know, you can't really learn what you don't fucking know. So with me, like when I, I joined, I went to the military at a very young age because my brother was looking at life in prison. Mm -hmm. So I went away to the military to, to figure out am I capable of being legit and following a routine and discipline? Mm -hmm. Because if not, I'm going to get out and do what he's doing. And at that time, my mum was dying with cancer. So Sorry I'm taking... Yeah, it's okay, my brother. Thank you. She survived three okay. times. Oh, she, she's, I'm Whoa. a full-time carer now. That's I'm a full-time carer, yeah. She's a fighter, man. Where do you think he got it from? Yeah, yeah. For, I've got to go to hospital after this to, to see her. That's amazing. So thank you. Well, not a you know what I mean. Yeah, no, that. no, no. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, all that. I yeah, fully yeah, yeah. understand. So it's like here... I'm now in a position where I have to rely on my mindset. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else. Mm -hmm. I have my mindset. I have no friends, no family, no, no, nothing. So that was it. I, I developed lots of strategies and things and branded and marketed myself over time. Mm -hmm. Social proof myself whilst playing football for Preston North End in the David Moyes. Played at Lula Shaw Camp. Played at a high level, professional. The professional level, yeah. At the highest <laughs> level, yeah. <laughs> this guy just keeps ticking boxes. Yeah, man. yeah. So, and then <laughs> I, Were you that size as well when you were playing? No, I was small. I was going like, to say, imagine. Seven kg. Yeah, seven kg. And then well, I joined the military. Then Louis started his boxing career because he didn't get sent to prison. Mm. Louis's your brother, right? My twin brother, yeah. Llewellyn, yeah. And he started winning everything as a boxer. So I was like, I, can, I know I can have a fight. Mm -hmm. I let, just get paid for it type of thing. But So... I become a boxer, he won everything, and I started winning all the boxing championships, the inter-battalion, the inter-company, the infantry, the mm. army, the combined services. Then I win the national championship, the ABAs. So I become number one oh. in my country. And then I turn pro. All of that was nothing to do with resources, having a fucking rich fucking family. It was to do with my mindset. And all of a sudden, I'm finding myself compete at the highest level in different disciplines with fuck all. It's all to do with my mind. Mm -hmm. And this Pressure. is some, thank you. And this is something that I wanted to become a huge advocate for because they didn't know when I was playing football at Lillishaw, when everyone was coming in their Mercedes from Man United and Coventry and Arsenal, Big Reese was fucking borrowing money from fr family and friends, getting coaches. I'm going back to the shithole. They're going back to their fucking posh houses, right? I need my mindset 24 7. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've been built everything around personal development mindset because that's all I've ever known yeah. how did you um that's all I've ever known do you know what I mean you said you started doing like mindset coaching from the age of 16 but how yeah. would you how would you even coach like that because obviously coaching nowadays is so much more accessible to everybody it's really really interesting mate so I was in a gym called Future Fitness in Coventry mm -hmm. and it was um it's an interesting gym because a lot of important or top of clientele went there mm -hmm. do you understand so with me being a certain way, me and my brother used to teach people how to strike and fight upstairs. So doormen would come to us that would be 20, 22 stone. I couldn't necessarily be punch people. Yeah, yeah. And we're saying, look, to be able to stand on the door rather than get yourself in a predicament, a strike will finish it, so on and so forth. So we brought all these people in and there was just a running narrative that everyone who's lifting weights focus on the size of their muscle and how they look. And all the doormen care about one thing, how they look. No one's focused on their top four, four fucking inches. Mm -hmm. And the running narrative was, if at 16 years of age, I can look at a 35-year-old man who's 22 stone and communicate in a way in which he listens to me and changes his behaviour and what he does, I'm a coach. Doing mm. something right. I'm yeah, a coach. Yeah, yeah, I'm a coach. Yeah. I'm a fucking coach. Mm -hmm. I'm a coach. Because yeah. I'm a 16-year-old man Kids, sorry, yeah, coaching literally. a fucking gangster out of jail, looking at me saying, yes, coach, I'm that guy. <laughs> you understand? Now, what makes feel? a good coach? Um, okay, then, brother. So how I launched my coaching business was I was penniless broke on a mattress having left the army. I was on a mattress for seven months. I got bed sores, right? I had that much self, low self-esteem. I used to piss and shit in a fucking bucket in my fucking bedroom. Tough. I shit you fucking not, right? I used to buy as much junk as I could with the money that my mum would give me for sugar. I'd eat as much sugar as I could in the morning to put myself in the sugar coma to go back to sleep. Oh, wow. 
right? On one morning, I found the yellow pages in my bedroom underneath the rubbish of my fucking food, okay? And I was like, I need help. This is seven months. I can't, I don't, like, I don't speak to no one or anything. I literally spend 23 hours in my room. It's like I'm imprisoning mm-hmm. myself, right? What age was this? Because obviously at 20, six, 25, 26. Oh, so you started on your uprise and then you hit like yeah, a plateau. Hit, yeah, the, the military, when I left the military, I felt like institutionalised and I was right. left to my own devices. No revali, no roll call, no one to fucking... No purpose. Zero purpose. But then I spoke to this guy, I opened up the yellow pages and I, I opened it up, man, and it turned to C and it was counselling, man. And I fucking went down the thing and there's a name come up and it's his name. I won't mention his name. And it was from a local gym. And funny enough, the local gym was a, a partnership of the gym where I began to mm-hmm. learn myself. And I, I went from this meeting with him and I, I broke down and I said to him, look, I want to be in a position where I can just speak to people and they'll listen, get empowered and do something with their life based on the stuff that I'm going through. And at mm-hmm. this stage, I'm on a mattress in a council house opposite a crack house. Yeah in emergency electric, counting my chicken breasts and counting my green beans. I've got nothing. You understand? Mm-hmm. I think I had a car on finance, I had to park three miles away because we were getting clamped. Uh, so I had nothing. So I, I spoke to him and he said, you can do it. And then I literally went away and within three days, I wrote my first business program, Plan, which is um, a personal development and a fitness company. And I called it Veni Vidi Vici, which is Julius Caesar for I came, I saw, I conquered. Mm-hmm fitness um, and conditioning. So I got it tattooed on there and that's when I made my first, I think it was five figures wow. from absolute scratch. Mm-hmm. And that was a different service because it was personal development with physical education. Right. But no one knew personal development then, so I didn't brand it or market it like that. So effectively you were a PT that just had an extra cutting edge. It, 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 to them, yeah. 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 But to me it was all manip- yeah, influence, manipulation, mind mm-hmm. stuff. Does that yeah. make sense? And I did that from the age of 16. And what I've done is been able to access different demographics through my own personal achievements. Wow. Crazy. Does that thing. make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what it was, sense. I remember documenting, I was in Coventry Town Centre, going past Thomas Cook, and it was holidays, and everyone was going on holiday, and I had nothing. And I thought, one thing I can do is tell people how I feel. So I flipped the camera, and I cried, and I was leaning over um, um, a public toilet, and I said, listen, I'll tell you now, man, I'm going to have seven holidays once. This year, I'm going to have seven holidays, and I will get emotional. And then I went away and I worked. And then I think it was two years later, I had fucking 22 holidays in a year. I travelled the whole fucking world. And I said to social media, it's not about that. It's about the fact that I had the ability to say it and do the work to achieve it. Because yeah. there ain't no fucking rich daddy around here. Mm. There ain't no fucking bank loans around here. There's hard and cash that you have to make legitimately. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, Whilst navigating my way through various criminal offences and things, trying to straighten myself out. What, yeah. what did what did what did yeah. that what did that year entail when you said I'm gonna go on seven holidays this year? What did that next year look like? Yeah. So what did you? How did you take it to the next level? Then? It's very very simple, man. People always ask me how did you do it, and it's very simple. I've I've done the same stuff. I've just never quit. I've done this. What I'm doing now is what I got ignored 15 years ago. I feel massively ignored now. Mm-hmm. I should be up there with fucking turned up. I hold myself in high regards. Okay, but it's like a case of when you believe in something, you don't become super unflexible in your, in your own purpose so then how did I do it it's identifying firstly what I had to do to fucking get out of my hole mm-hmm. and at this stage Equita Moorcroft Barclay Card I mean huge amounts of debt because of some of the things that I used to buy and stuff in the army and now I've got no income mm-hmm. okay then so how much debt am I in and at this stage I've developed a huge phobia to letters because every letter that I received was bills but still so to this day balance to this day, I struggled to my partner has to open my letters. Okay, You'd open them and it would just say outstanding balance and be a number you don't have. No, it got past that point, family, because when it gets to the point of you're super fucked, they hand post it and there's no, it's we're coming to get your stuff. Oh, shit. And at this oh. time, I listen to this. My mum's probably got cancer for the second time now. She's frail as fuck. And these debt collectors are knocking on my door. Mm-hmm. So what's happening to me now? I'm getting into violent altercations and getting arrested for it. It's not what you want. Whilst trying to get mm-hmm. myself out of trouble and out of debt. D- and create what this the new f- life. Yeah. And create this new life, right? So then, this is what I did. Started my coaching business. Um, I was on my mattress. And I told social media I was super busy in my office. But I'm taking on some new clients. 
by that time, everyone knew I was in the military and I'm a former ABA boxing champion and a retired professional boxer. Mm-hmm. Everyone booked in. Um, but what I did... Did you have a social media presence at this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can... I have a very complex story. I got reached out by a photographer called Simon Barnes in London. Right. And he took us under our wing at a very young age. And he said, you're quite unique in regards to how you look and what you say. Mm-hmm. You should start a twins page. Mm. And we were like, fuck off. We're <laughs> yeah. from the streets, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, wouldn't, why would I want to be online? Yeah. To get arrested? No, thanks. Mm-hmm. And then I looked into it and thought, oh, this is an actual thing now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need gift gaffs and blackberries and little burner phones. Yeah. If I can bring an online presence, maybe this is an opportunity where I can actually utilise some sort of my potential mm-hmm. rather than making bad decisions. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took his advice and I think it was on day one, 2,000 fucking likes. That was good for my ego. So I like that feeling. Yeah. The issue that I had was I never knew how to convert the attention into monetary statuses. Mm-hmm. So I got very pissed off with the platform because three or four years were just sexual attention. Yeah. Mainly yeah. of fucking guys asking for socks and pants. <laughs> it's fucking real, yeah, real talk. We get the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 well. I got some feet pics the other day. Standard, yeah. I get it on a regular <laughs> basis. But then it's like, <laughs> I, I can't monetize. So that then led me to understand how to learn how to brand myself yeah, yeah, and yes. market myself. Yeah. Obviously, I had to learn myself because no resources to get mm-hmm. a coach and things like that i'd say it's a lot more accessible nowadays as well to understand how to brand and market a personal social media page because through my tiktok anyways if say if i'm scrolling through like there's plenty of content teaching people how to do this really fortunate there's a lot of examples Mm -hmm. really really fortunate and a a lot of it i think adds a lot of value to the individual but at the end of the day a lot of people say reese how how have you built the brand presence like for example when Grant Cardone and Alina Cardone come to the UK, they ask the question on their Instagram, who do you want us to collaborate with? They've got a thousand messages saying, Reese and Louis. Like, that's different. I How still can't we believe that you got, you had to sit down with what, them guys. What was it no, like it was really, no, so it, we're like, it's not talking, it's like, we understood each other. He mm-hmm. understood we were on the rise or trying to establish ourselves and he wanted to cater for that. When he was in the UK, what no one said was, all the other podcasters were paying him. Mm-hmm. X amount of money to be on their podcast. He come to my podcast for free. We got pissed before. We got pissed after. I took him out to the boxing after. That means you're we doing something right the next day. It? No, it's just one of them things. Yeah. So it's like when you have genuine values are aligned with other people, you get on. Yeah, there's no you just real, vibe. Real, 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 real yeah. recognizes yeah. real. And if you watch the actual YouTube video, you will see the the the, the rapport between me and my brother and Grant especially and his wife Alina. She's fantastic. We fucked her up in the gym the day after <laughs> boxing. So it, it's nice because I think putting yourself in those environments, sometimes when you're on the rise, you can alienate yourself from super successful people, mm-hmm. such as personalities like Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Les Brown, all of which I've spoke to. You know what? What, what was it like talking to Grant? Because Grant for him, I, I remember when just watching so much of his videos. <laughs> Hard work. In what sense? Right. So Grant, I love you, but everyone knows what you're about. He's alpha, isn't he? Well, yeah. He's alpha and he's walked in and I'll share this massively openly. You know, I was nervous. He's an inspiration to mm-hmm. me. Of you course. Know? He's Same. someone that you can look yeah. up to, right? And I was like this, I shouldn't be this nervous because it's a collab. But I'm like, he's just a super admirable, powerful motherfucker. Yeah. And I was shitting myself and we got this, I got a Rolls Royce. I had a, everywhere I used to go was Rolls and stuff. Did and you? we pulled up in our Rolls and we hired out a very expensive room that had a Harley Davidson in the middle. Mm-hmm. It was a full on beautiful production and so on and so forth. He comes in wearing shades with this fucking aura. Yeah. I see he's got his Gucci's on. <laughs> I've got my Gucci's on. He's got his shades and I've got my shades. I'm like, it's going to be a clash here. Right? <laughs> he walks up and he says, what the fuck are them on my feet? And I say, you cheeky fucker. So you I yeah. No, but I was wearing the Titan ones <laughs> oh and he was wearing the fluffy ones at the back. <laughs> so I pretended to throw a punch and Lou was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and Reese, you threw a punch at GC. <clears throat> And we just got it off like that. Yeah. And it was really, really, really fucking good. Really, so effectively, really good. he probably broke your nerves and oh. broke the ice with that with that Massively. comment, which made you come into the element of... Massively. Then, do you know what I mean? But can, I, can I say one thing, though? Even though the banter and the rapport was there, I never once didn't gauge the fact that that guy is super fucking powerful. Like, yeah. Yeah, we had conversations. Yeah, we had banter. But at the end of the day, in those situations, I'm the sponge. Mm-hmm. I'm the student. Yeah. Like, everything that you tell me, his wife, the day after, we went out. I had a boxer boxing for the British title who I sponsored yeah. um, from South Africa. Mm-hmm. 
So we went out, got t-shirts, he won the title and things. Grant and Elena were there. I went out and got fucked. Had about an hour sleep and then coached Elena. And then we did a big, massive podcast in the boxing ring. And she told me something that I, I never knew before. And I, I don't know what the figures were, but they were like something like 30, 40, 50 million in debt. And they they were fucked. They couldn't get out of it. And they turned it all around. And she was saying on the podcast how absolutely challenging and soul destroying it was. So the, the level of admiration I have to be able to just breathe the same air with them, let alone listen yeah. to some of their stories, that's that's the, the level up. Wow. When did that you, I think um, everyone should experience. When did you link up with Gary V? Gary V I said no to. Um, oh, what? And the reason being was I went on a massive... I'm a culture hacker. So if I think someone's great... That? So if I like a culture, for example, personal development, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is find a way to access the top people in the culture to be compared by. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to fit in. I have no interest in trying to fit into people's generic beliefs. You want to stand out? I have my. I do. Yeah. No, one, people say they do, but they're fucking riddled with fear. <laughs> I want to stand out. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to be heard. I want to be listened. And with that comes being misunderstood. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Because my map, my reality is based on my life. Mm -hmm. Unless you lived it, you can't say fuck all. Mm -hmm. However, I understood one thing. What do you think it is? I ain't got a clue. No, I don't know either. But, but culture hacking, people will draw direct comparatives between your content and the fucking other persons, which is absolutely where you wanted. Mm -hmm. But I found with Gary Vaynerchuk, I messaged um, Gary, um, Grant Cardone spoke to us, which was fine. We just dealt with that. Les Brown, I did a keynote with Les Brown and his daughter. Who's Les Brown? I actually don't know. One of the biggest godfathers in personal development. Is that in the history of personal development. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not really too clear. The, the, the godfather. He, he I'd changed I'd my whole life. I'd say with, with, with people that, like, uh, that I watch for... Not inspiration, but that I watch and I can resonate with p for personal development are almost from a different era. Like, although I've watched the Grant Cardone and the Gary Vee, and I'll always listen to a podcast if they've got one with someone that I listen to. But I look up to people more like, uh, I really look up to Eman. I, I really enjoy Hamza's content. I, I don't know if you know these guys. Never heard of them. Um, Luke, well, not, not so much Luke Belmar. He's, Maybe so what I he's achieved with some of the stuff. stuff that he says is a bit out there. Luke. It? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Eman, he's a 22-year-old that owns a software company. He started off actually being a freelance videographer, like kind of like we have. And he's now got a software company worth over 100 million. And I, yes. I really look up to these guys yeah, that yeah. I'm talking to. It's, it might just be like a generational thing. It is. It's, it's a similar thing, though. It's, it's the next like, generation yeah. of these like these pioneers like, uh, in I'm, these kind of lanes, you know? We've got a po we've got a list of podcast guests. And I mean, Eman, Eman's on there. I can't think of too many names. Yeah. Obviously, that's why it's on a list, but... And that should be your goal. What I did... Gary Vee is on there. Yeah, yeah what, he is actually. <laughs> the reason why we never did it, because Gary Vaynerchuk, his PA, got on the phone to my PA at the time, and they wanted... You know he's got um, a collaboration with K-Swiss? Gary Vaynerchuk's got his name on the bottom of K-Swiss, hasn't right. he? Um, oh, okay. Crush It or something like that. Mm -hmm. He wanted us to buy, I think it was, 600 pairs of shoes out of our own back, back, back pocket to give away to our fans, and he wanted 30K cash. Mm-hmm. And I got a grant card I'm coming on for free and I'm taking out for a beer. Yeah. Allow that, bro. I'm yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm cool. Same with the Les Brown thing. Everyone had to pay to go on the stage. I said, I'll give you a rev split because I was out to the whole to the whole arena, which I did. I closed the whole arena. That's one thing that you we, we spoke about when we spoke on the phone in the past is that you you, you did talks. Yeah. Do you I've, want to talk about those a little bit? International keynotes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've just I've keynoted. So people are when I was starting my fitness journey on YouTube and mm -hmm. social media, man, a woman um, called Rebecca Chloe Stevens, a really nice girl from my school, sent me a message saying, hi, Reese, you look like you're doing really well. Like the joys of social media, innit? Yeah, I've yeah, done yeah, nothing, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I had to do. You know, I had yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I'm positive, I'm focused, oh, I'm we driven. Kinda, we get that. We you, get that. When you, some people are like, you look like you're smashing it. You know the score? But we're, we're busy. Yes. Like, but, we're here, there, and everywhere, but you look at the books. Yes. We're not it's really smashing it. Just <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the hardest things. When people, if we're out and we're working and people see us, they're like, and they say, oh, you're smashing, you're killing it. I'm just there, I'm like, it. I'm like, yeah. bro, like, I'm not like, don't, just chill, man. Like, And I'm really trying to not let it get to me because I think some people, that, that would really get to their head. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. fuck with them. No, no, but the, I think the, the thing is, yes, is understanding where you're at and where you're going. Everything mm -hmm. else is irrelevant. Yes, yes, yes And yes, it's yes. a process, man. Yeah, yeah There's yeah. no speed up, lads. Yeah. Because here's the thing, if we speed the process up, we miss vital learnings. Yeah. Lessons and discoveries. And as well, uh, obviously, you, you'll know better than me because I haven't got too much of a journey yet and it sounds like you've got one hell of one. Yeah. But the journey from everybody that I've ever spoke to with any kind of experience is more often than not the best part. 
I think a hundred percent. And because what you you do is you set these goals. They could be emotional goals, financial goals, or materialistic goals. And when you achieve them, you go like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Lamborghini, Literally. the Bentley, the Range, the Defender, the eighteen Rolexes, the APs that I've had. Fucking RH, we'll get there, won't we? No, no, no. <laughs> no, but we will, but though. I, I look back, guys, and I look back at all the content that I used to share, right? And obviously, it was where I was at in my life, so I have to respect mm -hmm. that, right? Because I come from fuck all. Mm -hmm. And when I made money, I bought everything that I used to dream of. I cringe now. Really? Can I tell you something? This is some grown-ass 40-year-old man business, right? I'm here to take it, bro. Please, my fam, okay? It's like, fuck, we get too because you hear this but you don't go through it mm -hmm. i've been through it i've been through it right we get absolutely influenced by what we're seeing what we think needs to happen so i made all this dough and the first thing i gotta have a lamborghini because that's what successful people have yeah, yeah, yeah. and i got it then i gotta have all these watches and I, it's like realistically it ticked the boxes but it weren't really where my values were and part of me being on this podcast is i really wanted to get that across there really truly follow what properly makes you happy because mm -hmm. there are so many fucking things online that take your attention without you even knowing it yeah without you even knowing it what truly I've makes you happy there. me just helping people bro watching people go like chris said at the start <laughs> you know watching someone go from a to b mm -hmm. yeah. and to c but the what i love right me is having these awkward phases during a program when I'm coaching someone when they're transitioning. Mm -hmm. well, as a coach, I know they don't like it and they're uncomfortable. But as a coach, I know they've got the potential to achieve it. And then when they achieve it, they'll have a cry. They'll send me a fucking huge inspirational message to say, thank you, coach. <laughs> and I say, you weren't fucking thanking me three weeks ago when you were about to cancel the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's life, dickhead. Yeah. Understand that moment when you were about to quit, You'll get rewarded if you stick in there. Yeah, yeah. And that's a universal lesson I like to coach in my program. One and that's th what I love. One that's thing amazing, that you said... Um, Thanks, bro. One thing that you said before that really resonated with me, and it, it almost like made me kind of feel like I'm doing the right thing, is when I asked you what you did to go from that that position where you said you were going to go from seven holidays and you did 22 and stuff like that. And you said you just did the same thing every day, yep. which you're still doing now. I was like, it kind of gave me like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Because that's what I... I I'll be honest, I am questioning myself a little yep. bit lately because the business isn't going exactly how we want it to. Not to say that we're doing absolutely terrible, mm. but it's like, it's tough. It's fucking tough, man. And I just want to say thank you for that. No, it, it it can, I, can I elaborate on that, mm -hmm. right? It's challenging, right? Because you need to know what we need to identify as habitual that's productive mm -hmm. and what we need to identify as what's habitual and regressive. Because as humans, we do two things. We do things that take us towards our goals and we do things repeatedly that take us away from them. Mm -hmm. So what I would do in your circumstances, identify, okay, what am I doing correctly every single day that I know if I repeat over time and time and time is going to take me towards a goal or an objective? What things am I doing daily that I know are counterproductive and regressive that mm -hmm. I must sacrifice to move forward? That's the first step. The second step... I've never even done something as simple as that. As to I know, so... I can give you mine straight away. It's my phone. Yeah, so it just is. with everything I coach, okay, it's tangible. So I don't talk shit, I do, but everything's <laughs> backed up with framework Everyone and action Everyone likes to talk steps. a bit of shit, yeah, come on. Yeah, but it's all action. Like, if yeah. I do... Sorry. It's if I do this, I can achieve this. Wow. <laughs> and then the second thing you do is, okay, then, if I've sacrificed these areas that are not productive, okay, so therefore they could be deemed as regressive or destructive... What can I now do with the time that I have? So I then have a look at three areas. Admin. Second area, income producing activity, IPA. Third area, branding and marketing. I then put my day up in three areas where I look at setting goals in each three areas. Mm -hmm. That's how I leveled up my business and grew. What, every day you'd set these goals for, yeah. the, for the day? A fucking course every motherfucking day, seven days a week. I remember doing simple things like taking Nando's off my list because I couldn't afford it. Mm. How am, why am I spending 17 quid a week on a Nando's like I'm something when I can't afford a fucking car? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, allow that, bro. Like, buy Nando's. And then what happened was I was making 20 pounds per hour. I'd keep 18 quid, put it in my DVD because I never had a bank, and I'd treat myself to two quid. And the two quid would always be like a boxing magazine. Yeah. And that was my motivation then to go make more money. Yeah, but yeah. these are all the little steps that you have to take to achieve your potential. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. there's always elements of sacrifice that we yeah. must display in order to get what we feel we're entitled to. Yeah. Because what the fuck are you going to get it? Who the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. Like, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? And that way the universe goes, there you go, big man. You know what I mean? And you we look actually, like a thanks. We actually spoke about this two podcasts ago. And uh, was it our last in-house? But we said, 
if you just replace that hour and a half or that hour and a half uh, of Netflix or TikTok that you scroll learning with learning a new mm. skill or applying oh. yourself to your business in a different way, over the course of a month, you're going to accumulate so much knowledge and so much time that would have been invested into, that's going to be invested into the business or into just yourself that yep. would never have, it's literally what you just said. It's true, but this is packaged wrong. Go on. And this is marketed wrong. Go on. Because it's not identifying what happens if you don't. Okay. What it's doing is selling a concept. Give up Netflix and learn a new skill. Okay. What it should say is that you're addicted to Netflix and that's why you're going to stay financially broke. If you stay now financially broke, you can lose this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. If you give up Netflix and type this into Google, you can learn this. Mm -hmm. And these are the benefits. It should be packaged transparently because more people will be motivated to learn. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It Think about it logically. It makes complete yeah, yeah, yeah. sense. Obviously, when I said it, it was really broad. And no, the but, way that but, we said but it was broad. But that's how it's sold, though. That's, that's yeah. what I see every day, my G. But so that's, the, that's the difference where you stand out in terms of the... Yeah, so wow, what, I, okay. what I'll do first is I like to identify a pain point. So everyone else is marketed to by feel good. I'll make you feel good first yeah, yeah. and then give you the, the pain point after. Whereas what I do is an abrasive marketing strategy, right? It's called PSP. Um, my intellectual property, that is, right? Mm -hmm. It's I identify a pain point. I'm then competent enough to rely on my values and my experience to offer the bespoke innovative solution mm -hmm. directly for that pain point. I then design a product or a call to action to sell to that person. I do that to the masses online. I've done it on my podcast. I've done it on stage, publicly speaking, and I do it in conversations. How do you, how do you identify a pain point? Through conversational change, it's a skills. It's a mm -hmm. it's a coaching strategy. So a conversational I, change. Yeah, yeah. So mean? if I if I was to have a a conversation with with yourself yeah, yeah. or your dad mm -hmm. and build a level of rapport, it's up to me to identify what the person is trying to establish it during the communication. Right. Does that make sense? It will be then up to me to identify where I want to take the conversation. Mm -hmm. so, so it's influencing people through talk, through communication. What I like about, have you heard of NLP? No. You've not heard Never. of N -L -P. NLP? No. Yeah, so all the successful people that I've ever followed They've always had certain skill sets, certain mannerisms, certain behaviours mm -hmm. that I've always thought... Makes sense. Well, how'd you get that? No one that I know has got it. Mm -hmm. No one in Coventry has got that. <laughs> so I was like, I want to know about that. Mm -hmm. All that stuff that they all seem to have. And funny enough, like NLP kept on popping up and it's like understanding the frameworks behind and between communication. And that's what I like to try and deliver when communicating in working with people because you can influence people every single day. So is it, what what does NLP mean? Neuro linguistic programming. Right. Okay. So there's there's certain pillars to NLP that enable us to understand communication, how we receive information, how we communicate to other people and body language. It's really really stay out of influence. So have you heard of um I'm I'm a little bit like whoa like I, I want to find out more about NLP. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah yeah yeah. So you know Jordan Balfour yeah. So he's a trainer of NLP. So that's so what he sales does. Sales so in a sense. NL oh, NLP well, is sales. sales effectively yeah. is okay. that. How are you going to talk? How are you going to walk into the room mm -hmm. with yeah, presence? So which is your physiology, body language, wow. tonality. Okay. His NLP is the biggest influencer oh, okay. model on the fucking planet. Ashton Kutcher, hugely into NLP. Jim Carrey, hugely into NLP. Mm -hmm. All some really successful people. Uh, my massively... Um, into personal development on a level that they don't communicate on online. Go and look at Will Smith's content. That's a guy that's deeply into personal development and NLP. Mm -hmm. He knows a lot about the mind. He knows a lot about body language and physiology. Really intelligent. Mm -hmm. Really intelligent. One thing that I wanted to ask, and I thought of this before you um, you came on the pod, was what 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 do you think of the the characteristics and the traits of someone who's hyper successful? In regards to the that they possess. Mm -hmm. what, what what's a common trait which you think obviously you're, you're doing this as well on a, on a daily all, all of your successful clients everybody that's done really well what are the common traits that these guys have I can't say I've really coached anyone really successful mm -hmm. I've coached successful people but like what do you class as really successful I don't, I don't um, like because I've like a seven figure earner is that really successful not really for me so, like, uh, for example... Even I, people that you've networked with and people that you've met. Yeah, so that's a better question for me. So there's one guy, and I won't mention no names, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, but I'm a big guy, naturally imposing, I think. Mm -hmm. And I met him and I shook his hand and his energy demeanor just said to me, you need to listen when I speak. 
I'm a man of value. Mm -hmm. And if you don't listen, there's a consequence. And I'm unsure what that's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Right? And to confirm, please listen, you laugh, but listen to this fucking story, um, right? I, I had a coffee business. Mm -hmm. It was one of the biggest retailing coffee businesses in the country. I think we were doing 40k of coffee every fucking 14 days. This company identified me as a top coffee seller. So they flew me and my brother to LA to get an award. I'm over there hustling coffee and doing this stuff and get meet and get to meet this guy in front of all the other people. And I'm Reese is Reese, you know what I'm about. Mm -hmm. And I go up and say hi. He introduces himself and I thought, he don't seem that scary. And I sat down and my phone rings and it's to make a sale of coffee. And I thought, this is a perfect opportunity mm -hmm. to impress him. That's what you're doing it. Like, I'm mm -hmm. selling it for the yeah, big yeah. boy. He shut you down straight away. No, no, worse, <laughs> bro. Don't laugh, man. Bro, man. Mm -hmm. So I've answered, increase my pitch and tonality because I know everyone's yeah, listening, yeah, yeah. thinking, now I'm going to get a bit of a round of applause because that was a smooth sale. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you said? He says, do you think that fucking impressed me? Do you think that fucking impressed me? He says, do me a favour, just fuck off. I'm like this. What? What? My brother's... I you as well if no, that's no, someone you looked up to. No, 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 I'm not a pussy like that. Okay. I'm not like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. So it's like, oh, okay then. How it did affect me is I'm going to take this cunt's head off now. Yeah. Like, don't speak to me like that. <laughs> yeah, on a yeah, level, yeah. on a level, like, <laughs> yeah. okay, on a professional level... You have something about you. But if you speak to me like that, I'll just take your head clean off, <laughs> you fat cunt. I'm that guy. Yeah, yeah. So I go outside and my brother runs outside to have a word with me. He says, calm down, calm down, just go back in. And I go back in. And he pulls me aside and he speaks to me personally after he's publicly embarrassed me. And he's like, I fully understand why you did what you did. And why I did what I did is because you were me. Mm -hmm. You are me. Mm -hmm. We speak every day. To this wow. day, he lives in Malaysia, bro. Mm -hmm. He gave me a multi-million pound opportunity that I turned down several years ago. Um, it was to do with cryptocurrency. But it was a guy to this day, um, to answer your question, um, an unspoken demeanour. What does that mean? An unspoken energy. Okay. That means you're there. Yeah, he never mm -hmm. even opened his mouth. mouth you found the aura, so, right? Who are yeah, you, yeah, my yeah. bro? Like, like, give me a bit of that, because that's, that's different. Yeah, that's dope. Like, you you yeah, understand that's dope, that, yeah. that, that, that's, that you've been through processes to have that energy, because mm -hmm. you don't just get that by school yeah. and giving stuff, right? Yeah. And another thing is, right, please pay attention to this, especially you viewers, man, right? In NLP, you have different values levels. I'm paying a lot of attention yeah, as well, yeah. please, by the way. I'm please, just so, I'm sponging right please. now. And in LP, you have different values levels, right? And you get values levels. And the goal is always to be values level seven. So if you were to go to values level seven, there'll be like 30, 40, 50 bullet points of all these wicked traits and characteristics that you have. Mm -hmm. That's just all the uber successful people have. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how the fuck do you get to values level seven? Mm -hmm. How do you get all these traits through processes and hardship right and one trait that i love about super successful people that i'm yet to master and i would love you to master it way before i have is your ability to emotionally detach from certain aspects of your life and still be progressive and productive such as what okay then so here's the thing you know i did the annual classics and place number two mm -hmm. um last year i was homeless i was prepping from a car none of you knew so should we never knew i was homeless right I've just gone this through... Time, this time last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homeless. Everything went pear-shaped and I was okay. struggling, right? So that was homeless. Um, my brother getting carried off planes with armed police. Two days before, I had to do something. Mm -hmm. My mum almost died. Me flipping my car. That. Mm -hmm. It's fucking the process. And you still emotionally switched away from that with your end goal, or you didn't? I, I got on stage and won. Yeah. I, was, it's, it's, I had the ability to do that. I flipped my car squashed it in half I got told I should have been dead went to the gym three hours later detached mm -hmm. everyone else would be crying on their bed I almost died do you know what I mean like things have happened I've been, I won't go into it but a few things have happened where I've put myself in a couple of sticky predicaments it's like oh I still have to progress mm -hmm. you know that's having the ability to emotionally detach and still be productive because otherwise what happens is this is for anyone we set a goal, we set an objective, and everything just gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Everything gets, because you have the ability to be affected all the time. Yeah, because people always say life happens, right? Could, fuck off. No, it don't. You happen to life, rude boy. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that is, you happen to life. That's a victim mentality, yeah, yeah. you call that. And we're victors, right? Us three, we're victors. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that mentality, and I don't mm -hmm. understand that mentality. 
and I don't have conversations with people that have that mentality because yeah. I'm not going to waste my fucking energy. Mm-hmm. I don't play a convincing game. So the game is, okay, then if you, if you want life to happen to you, carry on, it will. But I'm about happen. I'm going to happen to life. Yeah, and that's yeah, what I yeah. encourage. Life create life. your own luck. L- literally, literally. Yeah, yeah. So how do you create your own luck? By just fucking working. Just grinding into yeah. the unknown every day with a positive mind. That's, that's the reality what, of that's it. That's exactly what, you know, that's that's a good thing that you said, you know, you're, the unknown. I don't know what the fuck fam, we're doing. Like, uh, right, this comes across so wrong, but. No, it bro, doesn't. Like, we don't know where we're going, what's going on. Like, it really is We just is know crazy. we're taking the right steps. There you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. And you know you're going forward. Yeah. And um, with belief. 100. And right. See the the the, the intuitiveness of his hundred, mm-hmm. right? That gets you places, my bro. Yeah. Because it was said in a congruent way. So your thoughts, your actions, your beliefs are all aligned and your yeah. body language, right? So it's like your congruency is refreshing because yeah, you'll get places. What I will say is this, and no one ever taught me this. I actually read it and I never believed it until I went through it. You know, part of being successful or part of traveling towards your end goal is having the ability to deploy ridiculous amounts of patience when we have nothing mm-hmm. we have no goal we want to move forward we're a little bit unknown but deploying sickening amounts of tenacity i find that hit me hard because it's a contradiction mm-hmm. it's asking you to be patient but still work hard every motherfucking day that's we, we, it's we, naughty we, we spoke about this on the first podcast i actually remember this i think it's it's, it's in the clip that's pinned on the top of my instagram is Having that well, belief yeah, in something having, that you yeah, can't having, see. having the having the belief in in something that isn't visible to you is so incredibly tough to wake up every single day and do the things that you know that you need to do when nothing's happening at all. It's so fucking tough. But it's like nothing's gonna stop me. It's like I the the only reason that I think that I'm doing what is right is because it's things that I've seen, things that I've heard online. But it's like I'm just every day I'm just like digging away, one foot in front of another, just trying to fucking grind and really do it. Can I share a quote with you that I live my life by? Please. By Le- Les Brown, that like you don't mm-hmm. know, right? <laughs> do you and know who Les yeah, Brown is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He hasn't got a clue. No, right. You ain't got a clue. I'll <laughs> no, stuff I know Les Brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is, listen to this, right? And it's massive alignment with what you just said. I think okay. it'd be really beneficial. Les Brown, this made me fucking cry because when I had nothing, all I used to do, I had the ability to listen to YouTube. So I do what's sold now. I listen to content, right? And I act on it. Les Brown said this, you have to be delusional because logical explanation and thinking will suggest that you can't achieve your goals today. You have to be. Fuck. So what he's saying is if we wake up logically thinking, okay, this is my goal, there's a huge chance that you will never do it. Yeah. If you have the ability and the confidence and the belief to be delusional enough to, I don't know how, but I'll fucking do it, bro. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's the, like the get black sheep, right? A hundred percent. Okay, so waking up in that delusional state, okay, having that delusional conversation with yourself multiple times a day, yeah. being that delusional guy when you're doing your sprints around the park, when you're in the gym, <laughs> yeah. yeah, being that, no, 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 on a level, because yeah, yeah, that yeah. delusion will transpire into other areas of your life. It, will be, it creates a, a delusional. Um, wave of momentum and all of a sudden oh you're lucky h chris oh reese you're lucky well no that delusional belief that i had for six years got me the lamborghini that i didn't want in the end but Mm -hmm. it got me where i am here it's mad that you say that the the delusional you word it as delusional because i've just recently got back from cyprus where we both come from yep and the family that i have over there obviously cyprus is a lot behind the uk just i love it for that but it is and their mindset is very behind, mm-hmm. and they're also a little bit older. So when I went over there, and I told them that I've come over here with my with my girlfriend, but I'm working. Yeah. They're like, how are you working? How are you working? Mad, isn't it? I've got my laptop, but how are you working? Okay, but I've got my laptop so I can do the stuff I need to do, etc. And I explain to them what I want to do, what my goals are, and they look at you like you're fucking crazy. Of course, of course. And, but I take that as a compliment. Because if you can't see it and I can, then that means I'm doing something right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's like I come across delusional. Where like I stand out and I'm the black sheep and I have to explain myself to get people to try and understand, but they still don't. Yeah, so Elena Roosevelt said, you know, I think it's along these lines. She said, you know, no one can make you feel a certain way without your consent. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to explain yourself. You feel, oh, yeah, this you is feel one it thing, necessary yeah. Yeah, to yeah. explain yourself. That's the first I thing am, I'd say. I, 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 I've got sick and tired of like trying to explain. It's boring, isn't it? Them. Because no one... The, the it's not so much explain myself to every, uh, no, every no, no, guy on no, the street. Just, it's my family. I want yeah. them to no, understand. No, no. I want them to feel a bit of passion no, with no, me. No, so, no, no like Chris. That. So, Chris, in this situation, right, I remember sending my mum a picture of a, a Bentley 
said, I'm going to get this next week. And she went, you look silly in it, son. I remember thinking, you cheeky little shit. How would that feel? Right, yeah. wait there, wait there, wait there, right? You have fuck all. I pay you money every single week. If I take the money away, you effectively have fuck all. Mm -hmm. right? Have some respect over my ambition. Yeah. I don't want to be taking my kids. I don't have any kids now, but when I do have kids, I don't want to walk them to school yeah. in the rain like you did with me in my holy shoes. So how about dickhead? It's what I said to her and she took <laughs> it on the chin. Yeah. You fucking show me level of understanding, respect and appreciation and she come correct ever since then. But I understood the fucking energy that I felt having to convince that motherfucking bitch and prove her wrong yeah, was toxic as hell. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, pff, have your opinion. I don't yeah. give a fuck. But I'll do me and I'll show you. Yeah. Just that way. The because show it's you more instead productive. of tell you is always better though, isn't it? You know, it always is. Can I tell you how better. I show now? Mm. Before the driving the Bentley. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, before I bought the car, I was a bit intelligent. I had X amount of money and I thought, okay, the Bentley's there, but how can I show my mom? How really can I it. how can I show my fucking mom? How can I make this a ting? Mm -hmm. What did I do? Get her one instead. No, no, no but no. my mom doesn't drive. She's a cripple, like she's okay. a cripple, she doesn't drive. Um Got my briefcase, got all the money that I had. My mum had never been on holiday in her life and she's never had a garden in her life. I went to her fucking house. I says, get in the car. It was a shit car, but I drove to fucking Thomas Cook. I says, where do you want to go? She went, what do you mean? She went, I ain't got a passport. I said, I've got you one. I chose Cuba or she chose Cuba and I took all her money out and she was like, she almost died. She almost died, and when I went that home, feeling was unbelievable. Yeah, then when I went home, we had people in the garden doing her first ever garden. She's like, "What the fuck's happened, son?" I said, "I've doing all right, yeah, yeah. showing you. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Rather than the stuff that you think I'm doing, I'm, I'm actually there. You go. There's your yeah. stuff. My thing that I, my, you know my I mean? thing that I've always said that I want to do is like to really show my parents, like fuck, like I'm like I'm theirs. Like when I make it is. I just, I, just, I just want to pay off their house more mortgage. I know that that's the, probably the most cliche thing, but like, I don't think there'll be any feeling close to coming home with that piece of paper. Can I give you feedback? I think, I think a lot of people don't think like that. Can, can, no, thank you. Can I give you feedback, right? Mm -hmm. So I invested half a million quid into art. I've got blue chip art, Banksy, Takashi Murakami. I've got some real nice pieces, right? Cut a long story short, I've been effed over by an art company. I've got a lot tied up and things like that. Mm -hmm. And one piece was to buy my mum's house. This was one piece of Banksy, sold your C&D. Boom, mm -hmm. 80K. That's my mum's house, right? Cut along so he's short. He didn't sell on time. Couldn't buy my mum's house um, right to buy. Felt distraught. Felt like a failure, man. Yeah. Like, you get me? My mum was mm -hmm. brought me up in a council house her whole life, single parent. I remember sharing cutlery. And my one opportunity to say, there's your fucking shithole mm -hmm. house. It's yours now. Mm -hmm. It failed. And do you know the feedback that I got from my mum? She sat me down, right? And she said, can I be honest with you? I didn't really want it anyway. It's not about any of that. I just mm -hmm. want to see you happy, son. Yeah. That, and that, I, that, I was at, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like, <gasps> like, fuck. I was just saying, that, you understand? That, it's yeah. like, fuck. That, so that just be aware actually, of that. That is actually what my mum will say to me now, but it doesn't doesn't change the fact that I still want to, I still want to do it for Of course, but and allow it to be constructive yeah, though, yeah. not like me. Because I beat myself up. It was really mm -hmm. fucking, it knocked my confidence around. Like, yeah. Big boy that can't do something for his old dear. Yeah. But but it's the end of the day, they're beautiful. My mom is just like, I just want you to be happy, son. And mm -hmm. whatever you have to do to be happy, just mm. stay there. Can I ask you something? Of course, of course. You said that you grew up in a single parent household just with your mom. No. Oh, okay. So I grew up with four women. I grew up with my auntie, my mom, um, my gran and my cousin. And it was just me and my brother. So I grew up in a female household, See, being mollycoddled like a fucking woman. Oh, that's woman. exactly what I was going to ask. What was it like growing <sighs> up without a male figure to look up to? Bruv, right? All I knew was love. I knew we were poor, but that was fine because mm -hmm. I, everything was about love and affection, right? But I'll share this openly because I don't give a fuck. When I've been to see people counselling and things like that to yeah. get assistance and help, right? They base a lot on my behaviours around violence, aggression, the fact that I've had so many things to do with the police around certain physicalities mm -hmm. with trauma around not having a father figure. I can't rationally align it up. Yeah. I don't, and I'm a, I'm a fully trained therapist, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. But I can't line it up, but there must be a truth in it. Do you think that there might just be like a, that might be, 
for the people that you're going to see for counselling an easy thing for them to say to you? Then? I'm glad you say that, Chris, because when you're in that position, I then think, right? Are they just I'm saying it because it makes sense? No, I yeah. then think I'm an egotistical cunt because I think they're talking shit. Yeah. But I actually think what you said. Yeah. But then I think, no, we should just be in a dickhead. But no, that's my opinion. Oh, well, the, he grew up without a dad. He grew up with loads of loads of girls around him and his brother. All they knew was, oh, fight each other. Oh, there you go. That's, that's because the excuse. Yeah. There's your explanation. What do you know they what I mean? don't say is you get a text message saying there's going to be a fucking man coming through your door with a shooter. Where's your weapons? Mm hmm. Maybe that's why I'm aggressive and defensive. Yeah, yeah of the, the, That's the reality of it. Maybe mm -hmm. you, you, know what you mean? had to step up early. Yeah, yeah. You uh, were the men early. Ran, ran the door, mate. I was on the door at 16, 16 and a half at, at a local so pub. So you were stood IDing people when you... <laughs> still, <laughs> still <laughs> with, with gel on my hair, <laughs> with my auntie's blazer that didn't fit. And when someone took the piss out of me, I'd just chin them. Yeah. Uh, that's me. Were you here, a big lads. boy at 16 or something? Tiny. Tiny. I was small, but I'd run the door. I'd have. Does that mean I'd, I've got some hope then? I was hey. smaller than you, man. I was really? Smaller, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I'm nearly 22 How, how now. much do you weigh now? <laughs> About 70, just under 75 kgs. I boxed at 81. I was at, at 81. Um, no, so at 22, you... I was 81 kg. Oh, fucking hell. 22, yeah, no, I don't at really, 20, I'm 22, I'm, you, I'm 83, 84. Yeah, you both got lovely physiques. You just treat them nice now. And I like to think now at 40, I, look, I feel fucking phenomenal. That's one thing. I had this you conversation with my dad bro, and you thanks, really... Thanks, bro. My dad didn't like it when I said to my old man... Um, when, when I said this to him, but imagine what we're going to be like when we get to his age. So my dad's about 50. Yeah. When we get to his age, after looking after our bodies now, because it was never a trend to Trust really be like me, that when you were 20. Bone mass density, flexibility, longevity. For me, you might not get it yet because of your age, right? But I'm almost double your age. For me now, it's about being in the fucking trenches for strength, durability. I don't want to feel compromised in today's world by some little scruffy 30-year-old, 20-year-old man. Yeah. I want to be strong and I want to be that fucking imposing 40-year-old guy. Mm -hmm. That's 20 stone. Yeah. I'm that man. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not necessarily for me about looking good. It's about being functional. That's exactly how I train. Do you, do, do you understand? You see, you see my old man. You see my fucking old man. Fucking great. My old man's touching 45 and he looks and feels the way he does. Now, people can look to their older generations and think oh well i won't be like that but it's kind of like i have to be like that and i have to level up because otherwise i haven't evolved evolved do you know what i mean it's, it's beautiful to see and i've made the mistake what i never discussed is when i put now my seven figure program i fucking did all the things that i had to sell coaching programs duration of the coaching programs how many mentorships and all that it was really easy to do mm -hmm. and i had a good community online you know what i mean yeah. I, it weren't challenging to say it was would be a lie but what I never factored in, gentlemen, was any level of health and fitness, man. So what happened was, right, I contracted a chest infection. And this is when I was doing about 60, 80 k a month, residual profit, right? Dope. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm drinking red wine every evening and having a few Monte Cristos every evening with a couple of nice Japanese whiskeys, right? Because it was a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Have this long fucking thing. I think nothing of it, but it's there for six or seven months. I'm thinking, it's just cough, it's just cough. I go to the hospital, they do a scrape, take my bloods. Then they give me a phone call saying, come in ASAP. At this stage, I'm shitting myself. Yeah. Because like, I've had a... Would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he basically sat me down and said, your new lifestyle is going to put you in an early grave. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you look me in the eyes and said, I'm telling you now. So I cried in front of him. Then I went home, I went live. I said, guys, please understand, I've made a bigger error. One that I never thought I'd make. I chased money and I got it. But it was detriment to my own health and longevity. Mm -hmm. So then I started a huge shift of intertwining personal development with physical education. So I use NLP and physical mm -hmm. education to create a more resilient, better person. Because I don't want anyone to fall into the trap that I did. I think health, I was like cone tits and everything, lads. It was horrific. If you look good, you feel good, though. Health, right? health, 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 is, health is the anchor to me. Like it, it really is like waking up every day and, and training eating whole foods, making sure that I'm putting the right things into my body. Like that, that for me, like if I didn't have that, like I'm not happy. Not, not, the not only that I'm not happy, but I don't feel myself. Yeah, so I, we had this happiness scale, yeah? Happiness within ourselves and happiness within business. And we knew we had so much more to fulfill in business, right? So that meant the work that we had to do compromised our own happiness. So we, we, we didn't have the time to go to the gym. We mm -hmm. were doing 21-hour days, around the country 21 up to build the seven figures so we had to make a decision i was just very grateful that i had the the discipline to revisit health and fitness again to be here now mm -hmm. so, so what did you do did you drop your output in the business to input more of yourself i stopped 
I stopped. Bye. Not interested. Me and my brother, we need to completely change. We're going down a path that we don't like. Wow. And it was a horrible decision, man. So you stepped from an 80,000 pound a month no, profit business no first what we did was i cancelled all the events so we had 78 scheduled events right, okay. for the year we just which emailed. obviously had a pay a paycheck next to them all right every single one yeah, we yeah, sold, yeah, yeah, every single event yeah, we yeah. sold out brother really yeah, loyal yeah. um really loyal community Amazing. really really loyal um, so you cancelled them just cancelled them just watched the bank cancelled them they're like now what and i was like i'm building my own why because i want to interfuse physical education with personal development mm -hmm that's it for me it's mm -hmm. that and what was happening and I'll be transparent and I hope 99.9% .9 of the motherfuckers that turned up watched this that I was creating clones so all these people that lack identity are coming to my rooms listening to what I say and how I say it and going out and copying me but you're not yeah. listening to the content mm -hmm. you have to find your own self within thank the you that you're, yeah. and to prove that motherfucking point the ethos of my work is ROI what does that stand for Risk of investment. investment. No, it doesn't. It? ROI? Yeah. Risk of investment? No. no oh, that's all of <laughs> investment, no? No, yeah. So it's all the same shit. You know no better. So I designed an ethos called return on individuality. Right. What a beautiful way to focus on personal development. You only get out of life when you double down on yourself. It's a beautiful way to build. It's yeah, a being to that's build. That's a lovely saying. Thank yeah. you, my G. And I got that when I was on a shitter. It's mm -hmm. no word of a lie. I made it up when I was Bro, on a shitter. I get a lot of good ones on the shitter. Do you, do you, <laughs> oh, driving on my own. Yeah. Like, shitter, <laughs> driving on my yeah, own. Yeah. H gets him in the I shower was, was, and running, right? No, no, shower and walking and running as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm running, I don't know why when I'm running. <laughs> it's just when you're in your own thoughts, isn't it? Endorphins yeah, yeah, you're just in your in own thoughts. I really enjoy my own company. Wait, do you give one of the greatest things. Is that a fact? You give off endorphins while you're on the shitter? No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, no, no. What I did was. The way you said endorphins and no, stuff no, like that, no. I was like, wait, what? I said one, I was in the gym preparing for a show and I looked a certain way. And I remember flipping the camera saying, look, this is no banter. Please take me seriously. If you pick your nose before you do an exercise, but pick it in this way four times, it's anabolic and you will put on fucking size. Just tag me, and I'll give you a free training program. Listen, I was fucking inundated, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was so terrible. This was like 12 years ago or whatever. I was like, fuck. Me and my brother used to play some games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the process, learning and building a yeah, brand. Yeah, were you yeah. getting people tagging videos going like Oh, like, yeah, yeah, on, we've done some. I've had, whilst <laughs> well, building a brand, we've built some really cool miniature communities, like clothing communities that yeah. we've sold around the world, you know? Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough when I first started my business, like I told you before, I culture hacked my way into the fitness industry by mm -hmm. collaborating with the likes of Furious Pete, yeah, Physiques yeah. of Greatness, Big J Extreme Fitness in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I had to sell my car to go to Texas to collaborate and I had nothing. We, me and my brother had to rob food from the hotel. Talk about taking risks, right? Yeah, because we couldn't afford no food, right? And the only way we could pay for the hotel is if we sold the clothes that we took, which was our brand clothes. The only way I got those clothes was because I sold the YouTube channel to a clothing company in Nottingham so they could get put on my YouTube channel and they're going to get huge exposure. It was all a blag just to be able to go with my influencers. Mm -hmm. So I sold my car, went over there, give a keynote, Dana Lynn Bailey was front row, all my idols. That blew up. I went over there with 600 subscribers. Come back with how many? 6,000? 22,000. Come back with 22,000 and I sold all my stuff. That's so, amazing. Yeah, thank you. And that's the risk reward we talk about. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that were the levels me and my brother were prepared to go to. We had absolutely nothing. Can yeah. I ask you something? Yeah, yeah, of course. What, what, do you think, what do you think me and Chris need to be doing to, to, to get to where we need to be? Or do you it, have it, enough it, of an understanding of what we are already doing? Yeah, you, yeah so videographer content obviously You guys have spoken more than we have. Anyway. Uh, um, um, a, more of a digital marketing company like we'll kind of offer any service like we'll just outreach to a contractor or something like yeah. that or try and figure out and do it ourselves to be honest with you just because we're fucking grafters yeah. Yeah. but it's just what we're doing every day is literally just everything towards the business or fitness the majority of the time or maybe go and see our girls yeah so it it depends in regards to firstly what your objectives are is it to grow the brand without monetizing it initially? Is it to monetize the brand from now moving forward? Is it brand exposure? Yeah. Is it to systemize the business? I was say, there's Is it to focus on public retention? There's, oh. there's two things. Uh, obviously, we want to grow the brand of the podcast, the, the brand of Gooms, and also just monetize the business as much as we can and really bring in Bring in more sales for me. For me, this isn't this isn't a business right now. No, yeah, this, this, is, this, this is, is brand. This, this is a hobby. This is brand exposure. This is downtime. This is where I get we the get opportunity to sit down, to sit down and, and yeah. listen to someone like you yeah. talk yeah. and take something from yeah, it. Yeah, of course. That's of course. what this is for me. 
and I can see myself doing it for 20 years. Beautiful, beautiful. Longevity. Yeah. The pod's fun. Even yeah. when it's an in-house, we just get to sit down and chat. Chill, man. Yeah. Vibe with the right so people. So if people can come along with that and, and and kind of tune into us guys and, and listen to us guys and take value from the conversations we have within ourselves and with guests, and we can then monetize it yeah. further down the line, amazing. But in terms of the business, we want to run up we want to run up some fucking money. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course. So I've it's two different. It's here. It's let's grow the brand, but here yeah. it's I want to make some fucking bread. But they run synergetically. You think? No, I know so because I've ran this model myself. I had the podcast, which is Champions of Mind. Okay, that was done in London in Mayfair. We had our own studio and we'd bang content through there. Yeah. And the other side was I had my pod, um, my coaching business. Mm-hmm. With my coaching business, these were in-house fucking events that we market to the public. Now away from that understanding the use of what I was coaching people to communicate online and stuff, I then built a media company. So I had a, a sister media company and they all ran together. So how do you use to level up in this situ- situation and predicament? Firstly, my first interaction with H, mm-hmm. okay? I shown an interest immediately. You were long in replying in regards to, I'll get back to you in mm-hmm. X amount of, you just fuck what the fuck? I want to give you money. Mm-hmm. I'll get back to you when. You need to have something there ready, framework sent, because there's something called an impulse purchase. Right. Give me time to think or compare your prices or to look at anyone else's work. You've lost me as a sale. Mm-hmm. That was the first thing. I thought the first point of um, so attack client early. acquisition. It's not attack. But it was, it's you, given an opportunity. Yeah. That's the wrong framework. Yeah, yeah, Because attack, I don't like that word. It's yeah. no, give people an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wait there. I've just expressed an interest and he's now asking me to wait. You can fuck off. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give you my money. That's how I think. Yeah, yeah respectfully. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. That's just how I think. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is, okay, then, um, what, what, what am I getting other than just videos? Because anyone can do videos. I know every videographer in the mm-hmm. country. So objectively, I felt that you need to be saying okay, then if I produce this for you, ideally we can start achieving this. But I didn't really get that from you. Mm-hmm. I can just do videos. So I'm like, I'm not spending any thousands of pounds on any videos. To be fair, when you reached out to me, it was like literally at the start of my journey. I remember it was... Um, I understand, but you asked yeah, me a question, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm no, just, no, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do you know what I mean? So then it's that. And then it's thirdly, it's like people like yourself, you need to understand you have a really unique skill set that people actually need. Mm-hmm. You can't build a brand without people like used to. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, then you need to fucking identify certain specific pain points in these industry then provide solutions that only used to can provide together mm-hmm. and push that towards people does that make sense mm-hmm. for example reels um on education selling how many packages are you selling to coaches online coaches to say if you produce x amount of reels publish and target to the right demographic we can increase your revenue by or exposure by. Mm-hmm. I don't get any of that yet. And that's the type of stuff I think people f- f- feel yeah, you need, need to, to show into. someone what are you going to get out of just a nice fancy I said video. To, yeah, um, that's it. That's it. How are we going to increase said, your I revenue to that's start it. bringing you something back? I said this to that's Chris it. the other day. I was listening to an Alex Hormozzi podcast with Stephen Bartlett. And yeah. Alex said how he grew his coaching business was he had a formula that he, so, well, he also had this formula which he was selling to gyms when they'd launch and then he turns it into, turned it into a coaching business. Yeah. But he said he had a formula that he would do and he knew that it worked and he would just sell this time and time again. Yeah. This is, exa- I, I think that this is really what we need is we need to come up with that formula that we haven't quite got yet. So I completely agree with you, right? I, I compl- I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you, right? Mm-hmm. Because when I look back, when I was deep in 60, 80, 100K, 300K in an hour, right? When I was deep in those moments. in an hour? Yeah, it was a coaching product. <laughs> I, I delivered <laughs> a... Um, <laughs> an annual coaching program, uh-huh. okay? And it was a cheap coaching program to what was in the market, so it was ethical. Yeah. Um, when I look back, it's like all the things that naturally happened naturally occurred during the process. I never knew whilst I was doing it, right? My formula, I deliver an event, and by the time I've delivered the event, it's on every single platform with 20 videos, micro content, and it's fucking online everywhere, including YouTube. Mm-hmm. Then I finish my day. Everyone was saying, how did the twins churn content like that? I thought 300 people have tagged us. Everything was just so synergetic. And that was a formula that we naturally found. So what I'm saying to you is, I don't feel a formula is something that you can sit, sit down and strategically plan. Mm-hmm. I think if you go through the process enough times together, you're both intelligent enough to figure out what works the best. Mm-hmm. 
Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's something you sit down and think, let's figure this out because of yeah. Yeah. That, that shit. That's good. Okay, let's tweak it here. Mm-hmm. And that's just time. And yeah, it comes from experience. Like, yeah. What it, works, what we didn't. Let's, like, do you know what I mean? Take that, that one from that one and plan together. See, oh, okay, maybe we're on something here. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think books take you further away from that. I think books can take you further away from your process mm-hmm. and your truth because that's theirs. Okay, so I think used to with your intelligence, knowing your end goal, knowing what it is you want to do and being happy to fail your way there, but understanding that your services is valuable and I don't see too much push marketing going on. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Visibly, yeah. um, online at least. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like when I said to you when you were away in Barcelona, what a unique opportunity Mm-hmm. crazy visuals all day every day make people feel like they're missing out on your work yeah. mm-hmm. like you's are fucking missing out look at my work mm-hmm. Pay- you missed all of that and I'm there like that I said the same to Nat mm-hmm. it's an opportunity because yeah. you, you're skilled and you have to make mm-hmm. people want and need your work so when I teach content creation there's three variables that I like to include when my clients communicate online we should try to elicit three emotions okay it's excitement intrigue and urgency mm-hmm. yeah so when we're putting stuff online, we need them to feel excited about what it is you're saying, the possibilities. Mm-hmm. We need to create a level of intrigue so we're not giving them everything. Mm-hmm. And we need to do something so they have to take action. Now. Yeah, yeah my G. Yeah. Well, we, 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 what, we, we want to create procrastinators, do we? No, yeah. we don't. We want action takers based on the ethical message and the innovativeness of our services and products and the uniqueness of how we communicate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we can do that over a consistent amount of time, Okay, the default position is success and wealth. But in the interim, what we do is produce a real tidy community around our services and products. And that's what I like to see. Mm-hmm. Does that mean say like intrigue, excitement, and urgency? And if your content isn't screaming that, then you're average. Sometimes it takes somebody from, from with your experience, just to break it down in simple terms. Because you. everything you've just said to us, we both already know. Yeah. <laughs> but the way that you've put it into place and, and worded it, Makes it make sense. Thank you. Um, Just without being too gobsy, because I've got a lot of value and I could talk for mm-hmm. fucking 30 years. I could listen for 30 years. By Thank you. Time. I was in Barbados um, on a chilled holiday. And my goal was to go to Barbados. So it cost me 15K. That's cool. But I know I can make 40K when I'm over there based on utilizing the environment to sell my services. Right. And I did that. Right. So that wasn't an issue. When I was there, I picked up a book from the airport and it was Jordan Balfour, The mm-hmm. Straight Line System. Okay. The Wolf of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And he's a massive sales trainer and he's a trainer of NLP. And he talks about, and it's something I've taught for a long, long decades. In order to elicit or to get a sale from someone, you need to make logical sense, but you also need to fucking trigger them emotionally, you know, in order to get a sale. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the intrigue, excitement and urgency is you're catering for both of those levels. So logically, your content has to make sense, Mm -hmm. but it should be enough, the content should be produced and within your capabilities to capture people emotionally. That's what a lot of people lack because they lack Mm -hmm. the depth. Does that make sense? Yeah, so how did it make you feel? The, 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 The first question that I used to ask people when I used to sell them a cup of coffee or give them a free cup of coffee is to give them a cup of coffee and say, look, I don't want no money for it. Make you warm. I need to know two things. Number one, how's it taste? Number two, how's it make you feel? Oh. And if you don't like the taste and it doesn't make you feel good, I'll give you some money. Mm-hmm. The feedback used to be, it made me feel amazing, taste tastes amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's how our content should be, whereas my content's quite different because my industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have to expose pain points. Probably make people feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bad guy. Yeah, I'm the course. gangster of NLP. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, the criminal. Yeah, yeah. That's what they all say. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm the guy that just saved your life. Like you, you don't know the amount of lives I've physically saved from suicide, drugs, kids battling their parents I've changed lives congratulations thank you fucking very much but I'm proud of that shit but it is okay then Reese had to be a cunt to get there I had to be that guy to get them from the trenches Mm -hmm. because everyone at Molly called that person and told them what it is they wanted to do kept them still But I I, I used to play football yeah and um, my dad was very heavily involved in the coaching and I'm going to use what you just said about the bad guy some people react to bad guys well and some people react to good guys well now in the change rooms he knew that whatever happened, even if I had the best first half of my life, if my midfield partner wasn't doing something, he would slaughter me in front of everyone to make sure that everybody else listened to what he said to me, even though it was at someone else. Genius. Because I could take Genius. the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. But my midfield partner would shrivel. 
Yep, yeah, I get it. And he would come out and be worse. Yeah. And he wouldn't want the ball and he wouldn't come and show and he wouldn't play forwards. So the bad guy works with some people and the good guy works with some people. And you obviously have found well not not maybe you not found them. They found you probably. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, there's a time there's always a right time to work with Reese. Yeah. And there's always a right time to be around Reese. And there's always a right time to listen to Reese because I'm just one of those people. I'm my mind. I love how you, you use third like yeah, yeah, third, third person. person. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, literally yeah. just thinking that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Massive little cheeky wings. Yeah, massive well. community, you know. <laughs> and it's like, okay then, so do I run away? at 40, from who I truly am, the, the, the loud guy, the possible volatile, volatile guy, the impulsive guy, the super loving, caring guy that cares about people, do I run away from that guy or do I play the fucking same narrative as everyone else? Mm -hmm. And I'm just, at the moment where I'm at now, is I'm just doubling down and trying to encourage and include as many people as I can to double down on their goals in life because the thing is this, I think the more time that passes, and the more media gets pushed into our brains and the more conversations we have, the less it seems possible. Mm -hmm. And now I see so many fucking superb, excellent people paying attention to the wrong things. So being here and used to young lads, super motivated and driven, I'm quite excited for you. Because Thank it, you. It's because what, what, whatever it is you can conceive in here, you can achieve. Yes, that's massively fucking, it's a generic buzzword, but I've lived it. Mm. I've lived it. And that's what excites me about you. But what I don't want you to fall into the... Um, trap of and this may be me being old is just talking shit I said to my partner I hope these don't talk shit yeah do you when think I come talk here, shit or not no you don't I, I'm not <laughs> I would have just told you straight it's just, I'm, that, I'm that guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and I said I'll gauge the conversation if the energy is wrong and shit I'll just say fuck off I'm gone yeah. and I said let's see if they come correct and they did Thanks, which man. is no, my absolute pleasure and I don't say that derogatory not yeah, from no, my no, place I, I didn't take it in any other place. way yeah, yeah, yeah. But are you being real you know, you know what it is lads if you're you know you're sitting down in a room and say this room's called the success room and there's 200 people in there us three we walk in but they can't see us because we've got a Harry Potter invisible cloak on right and we listen to these conversations all these cunts that are talking about success are having the wrong conversations so it's like, how can you claim to want to be successful when you're wasting these m precious moments talking about the wrong things? Mm -hmm. Why are you not talking about growth, mental stability, emotional quotient, all these things that are what, huge. What, what, in that success room, what are they talking about then? No, and everything but. Oh, right. But they want success. Right. Okay. You, no, it's it's not, they want success. No, they're not no, our success. My G, they've walked into the room saying, I want to be successful. Right, okay, my they, bad. No. I took that wrong. I thought you were walking into the room of 200 successful people. No, no. Success no, room. so they're walking into this room saying, like, I want to be successful. I want to be successful. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. And then they go into their room and they've got everything there and they just have the wrong conversation. And then they wonder I why. Think, I think everybody wants to be successful, but I just don't think every, not a lot. Of, I don't think a lot of people have it in them to to achieve great things. Just purely because ev everybody wants. Uh, I'm just going to use these as examples. Everybody wants the nice car, the big house, no money problems. But no, like everybody's saying it, but no one's fucking doing what they got to do to get there. Yeah, no one at all. Okay. To achieve what a lot of not a lot of people achieve, you have to do what every, not a lot of people the, do. For, right? for instance, yeah. for instance, if you if someone won the lottery, you'd someone. Would say at home, well, imagine having that much money. No one's going to do anything to 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 get that much money, but not, right. no, or or that much success. I I completely agree with you. You said something that I disagree with. You said <laughs> not everyone's got it in them to be successful. Actually, okay, do you know what? Let, let me rephrase that because I said this last podcast as well, and I I, I I wrote something in my diary and I put up my story. I do believe everything's amazing. Everybody's amazing. I do believe anybody can tr achieve anything. It's whether they're going to apply themselves to do this. Yeah. Um, I completely. I think because I've worked with so many people, I've talked some serious scrope bags mm -hmm. and gone like, "Wow, the emotional, tangible growth transpired into financial success has been absolutely real." So that's proven me wrong because I looked yeah. at that mm -hmm. person like a waste of time. Mm. You and judge the book by its cover, uh, of course. Even as the coach, we yeah. do. I don't care. This is real, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But then you still commit and you do the work, right? Mm -hmm. So I agree, but I see every day. Okay, people underestimate what it takes to achieve any level of success not the cars and the houses just any level and what happens is these faggots right they get disheartened because it's not what they've read or seen it's like okay then you know if you want a lambo would you be comfortable crying 60 nights a day into your fucking pillow for x amount of time if that's what it takes everyone would say no i was i was the guy saying yes mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No one says this. So the fact of the matter is, anyone can become successful. People are just not prepared to pay the actual price. Do you think that 
that's because it's so accessible for people to see the end goal now through social media. My, my G, right? And I, I'll you can speak see the Lambos, you can see the watches, you see the big houses, you see the supermodels, and people think, well, if that 22-year-old, like E-Man, that's got a software company, did it, and he's 23, and he's got it, I can get it, and it's, it's going to be quite easy because he's done it in this it, time it, frame, etc. It's insane, right? Because I bought... I had, I think it was... Um, I had a Defender 110 car in edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful car, loved it. That got wrote off. I had a Range Rover autobiography, okay? Bentley GT Continental and a Lamborghini Huracan, okay? These were all my dream cars, I bought them all. I was toying with getting a Gallardo because it was a cheaper Lambo, mm-hmm. but I went in and got a Huracan. I think it was like 150. It made no sense to me. I got it, and when I got given the car I went by myself so it weren't a celebratory thing I weren't trying to ball I went there and got my Lambo and drove it I home I feel special when you got in it though no no it was like yeah. okay done no it's just I one of them we, we, we went to a client that, sorry I don't mean to cut you up we no, went to a client that, um, that was a supercar garage and we went to go and pitch them our services we were cold calling for the day and I, I sat in a McLaren which is for me that's like I want a McLaren man a 720S that's what I want I sat in it and I felt like fucking Batman I was yeah. there you sat in the it McLaren the... though when you know you're so far from it he sat in the Lambo when he's got it yeah, and the That's difference is, oh, well, I've got another story there, so one second, so yeah, yeah. A, remind me what you just said, because <laughs> it's powerful as fuck, yeah, yeah. okay? But I'm like this. Yeah, man, Don't I'm it. that motherfucker. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm for all you fucking haters, Tell doubters, them. you motherfuckers suck your mum. Tell them. Understand, pussy <laughs> boy. <laughs> understand? Yeah, 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 I'm that guy. But then, I actually had to put my window down and said to her, how'd you change the gears? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, no. Yeah, what's the little no, baby bar? Oh, he says, no words of a lie. The little baby bar. He goes, I just bought a Lambo and don't even know how to make that motherfucker go. Yeah. Bro, I literally, said, literally. I had a Rex and a Lambo and don't even know yeah. how yeah, to yeah, make that, 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 that was me. And that was me. And then it was like, okay, then, please listen to this. The universe told me something. It says, no word of a lie. My mother's soul. Everything just went wrong. Every, my whole life just went pear-shaped. What, from the Lambo? Lambo. Bought the Lamborghini. And I called this phase of my life Lamborghini problems. I got 37 tattooed on my neck because it was a year. Everything went wrong. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Lamborghini so, problems. So I'm like this. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm driving around in a certain context here, okay? But understand behind the scenes, I'm getting given those problems too. What is the universe? My coaching head goes on. And what, the, what is the universe going to tell me? And then T.D. Jakes, you ever heard of Bishop T.D. Jakes? I haven't. He's an international, world-renowned pastor, billionaire. He says, another level, another devil. And I was like, oh my gosh, you spoke the truth 10 years ago, the cunts live in my life. <laughs> you understand? Because that's another level, the Lambo. More but money, then more there's problems. another devil, yeah, dog. Yeah. No, no, another level, another devil. Not yeah, that yeah. more money, more problem nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. shit. So I've got now got a new understanding of success. Yeah. So before, would have looked at your dad and be like, yeah, rich cunt. Or handsome rich cunt, right? Mm. Now I look at him like a man of value because in order to achieve that level of success, you have to be a certain person. Yeah. You have to be a certain human being. There's no way around it. So I listened to people like that and it was like, fuck. Okay, I need to hope and fuck this Lambo off, right? But I didn't, I kept it for a year. But the issue, the, the thing that I found, I said, man, <sighs> careful what you ask for mm-hmm. because you get it really quick but what you don't ask for when you want to achieve that goal is all the problems that naturally come with it. That naturally come with it. Like, I want to make a million quid, but no one no one puts down on paper the, the amount of tax you have to pay on it. Yeah. And the VAT, I didn't mm-hmm. until it come through my door. Is that what you, happened? Did no, you spend course, everything? Yeah. No, of course I didn't. I'm highly invested. I'm okay. clued up. Um, but, but no one tells you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but no one tells you that. It's like, fuck. When you have a big goal, you get big dramas with it. Yeah. It's factual. So I sell the drama stuff. Then the goal's the bonus. Because yeah. that's the reality of it. What was the um, the other story you were going to say? Beautiful. So yeah. reference you saying, okay, thanks. And this bright <laughs> frontal cortex. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm here for it. I've lived it. the process. I've lived, I've, I've lived, I've lived, lived yeah. a life. So when me and my brother had nothing, my mom used to take us around this area in Coventry called the Avenues. So on my street was a street of prostitutes and crime. I'd wake up and naturally physically fight people if they're being loud in my street because I wanted to sleep yeah. for school and training purposes. The avenues had nice cars and all of this kind of Just stuff. Beautiful houses, bro. Yeah, yeah. There were probably four bed houses, mate. But to me, they looked like mansions. Yeah, they looked the best <laughs> thing yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And I'd go down there and I'd be like, oh, and it's like, because I used to suffer with anxiety as a kid. I could never sleep at like two or three. My mum used to take me there to give me mm-hmm. peace. Yeah. Right? And then anyway, 
if me and my brother had this fucking narrative as well, well, maybe if we expose ourselves to things, even when we can't have them, we're not in a position to get them, what would happen universally? And it was always a concept me and my brother ran until we fucking grew up because you never had the, the resources to get mm-hmm. there. Yeah, yeah. And my fucking twin brother video calls me, man. And I'm going, hello, where are you? He's like, guess where he was? Rolls Royce showroom. My man pretending. was in red debt. No, weren't pretending. Oh. He was living his future self. That's what the I difference. Said to, I, I said to Chris, we he's need got to the do Rose this. Go to, he's just waiting for reality no, well, to catch no. up. Well, yeah. let's be absolutely realistic. You're in debt. You're on your ass. You're in Coventry. You've got fucking lots of criminal lines history. But I want to become better and become more. Mm-hmm. I have no father figure. I have no um, influential people around me. But I know I can influence myself. So how do I influence myself? How does it feel to go and stand next to something that I know I can't achieve yet? Yeah. Okay, that makes me feel a certain way. Now what do I do to go about it? Right? Louis did that. Cut a long story short. Fast forward a few years. He, he asked me to go to Essex. He needs to show me something. I drive outside of a, the biggest mansion that I've seen. And he said, this will be mine in a year. I said, good luck with that, you pathetic, delusional cunt. That's, <laughs> not, that's not even possible with family with a handout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 11 months later, his. King, a, a king brother. wing, yeah, a king amazing. wing and a queen wing. 22 acres of land. That's amazing. That delusional application the and belief. belief. Yeah. Black sheep. Thank you. <laughs> Every day, those idiosyncratic behaviours, those idiosyncratic viewpoints that you're led to believe are not fucking... The that's so amazing about that, though, is even you thought he was delusional. Of course. Of course, because it... Brother, like, in the pits, in the trenches, you've got nothing. Yeah. How's that even possible? Fuck knows, but I'm going to throw enough belief into the mix. It's like, yeah. I always say to my dad that I'm going to fly... fucked up. I always say to my old man that I'm going to fly private, like, we're going to be flying private one day. Um, like, not to say, My dad, like, he, he knows that I'm... I'm destined for great things i'm gonna do good things but he just he he, he the private jets to him seem a bit far-fetched they so just they, they're do, cheap but it's gonna fucking happen man i got to a certain position where i always wanted to chat with jet and i never paid for one right so i got to a certain position when fit enough when you buy the lambo you get offered them mm-hmm. so you get companies saying would you like to fly on a jet for it's called um um, empty legs shit we need to go get a it's Lambo. called empty legs so you get companies <laughs> message you saying sir I've got empty legs from London to Paris is that when, is that when the flight just needs to go back to Paris yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so I've got relationships now with companies that just offer me fucking empty legs but the thing Can is put us in touch of course, of course <laughs> I could but the thing is with the right business model that is tax deductible See, do, you know? wow. so, do you know what I said the thing, if you're traveling and things, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Thing, the well, thing, if we've got to go to Paris to meet you for a podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's an empty leg. <laughs> That's what my accountant used to say. Oh, Reese, you know when you're in Mexico meeting your client on the beach? Yeah, maybe you should make sure they drink you. champagne. You should put it on yeah, my social yeah, media. You should put us in touch with your accountant. Yeah, he's switched on. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was just going to ask one more thing before we go. I was just going to say to the people that are watching at home, what's yeah. one thing that you'd say to them to really get the best out of themselves and become the best version of themselves? Okay, in order for you to get the best version of yourself, from my opinion is don't focus on the end goal, focus on who you have to become to achieve the end goal. So don't focus on the end goal, focus on who you have to become. So then how do we focus on who we have to become? Behavioural patterns, traits, perspectives, viewpoints, health and fitness, circle of influence. What are you doing every day to develop into the person who is deserving of what it is you require? Because otherwise you're nothing other than someone who's entitled and with with high increase of expectations of themselves. So every day, who are you becoming? What are you gonna sacrifice? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna apply outside of your comfort zone that's progressive, not regressive and destructive? Wow, I'm fucking fired up, man. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna go say. home and absolutely fucking Have a wank. destroy my day. <laughs> 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 destroy my day. Go on, I was going to say destroy. It's a dip. Can't you edit that? I'm gonna. One hour later, yeah, yeah. in the toilet. Do you know what? Actually, funny story. I actually, I actually don't masturbate. Oh, I do not. No, I, uh, I used to. I don't anymore. Yeah. I haven't for about almost. You guys probably coming up to about. Yeah, probably coming up to about eight months now. I admire. Do you masturbate? Um, no. No, I uh, you know what? That does fuck it. I don't. Yeah. But sometimes like I might break <laughs> bang. I might break the seal. Yeah, like yeah. but like it 
It's like intimate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's me and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Legend. You make it all over. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's me and me. It's me and me. Sometimes, bro, they say on the now that there's something, nothing, nothing's better than like a one-on-one touch. Yeah. Bro. You, <laughs> you and you, bro. Oh, I got, I got a new missus who's 36 and I think <laughs> that age, they're at their fucking prime and she doesn't give me time to relax. It's really interesting. <laughs> no, because it's, you know when it's like four in the morning and you're deep in sleep, and you're like, what are you grinding? There's nothing to grind on <laughs> yeah. before. It's asleep. And that's what she wants at four. It's interesting. So that's I don't amazing. master that either. I'm so happy for you, man. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's exhausting, mate. It really is tired. Well, we said this earlier. But it was, but me and H get a kick out of in the morning. Your alarm goes off. 6 a.m. Yeah, see you later, And then you're rolling over and... The, Stay for a cuddle, grabbing up your cock a little bit and stuff. And no, bitch, I'm going to the gym. But I get that. scared of that because then when I get back, she will literally rape me. <laughs> bro, bro, you know my, you know my girl, yeah? She's 53 kg. She has the best butt I've ever seen. She will sit on me for two hours and refuse to get off until the point where I'm saying, I'm probably dug out your insides. <laughs> get off my dick. Yeah, it's hard work, man. It's hard right, work. it sounds like uh, a tough yeah, life, I'm, man. There's I'm probably not, some guys... I, I, I love you, babe. <laughs> there's, there's, some, there's probably some guys listening that ain't touched some pussy in a hot minute and he's talking about two... Oh, it's exhausting, man. <laughs> um, um, on a serious one, try and keep this in. Um, lovely energy, guys. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you inviting me here. Nah, man. Your podcast, we appreciate you, know I mean? you massively. You I think on, this is honestly. my favourite episode to date. Yeah, it's it's a really, really good episode. Um, and really good. I, I genuinely feel like I'm going to be taking, I hope, well, I know the viewers will be taking something. I'm, I'm taking take something away from this podcast. Yeah. Um, I, I just like used to know away from the podcast and stuff. I've done it. I've actually lived it, not yeah. conceptually. It's really hard and it's really challenging. I've lost friends, family, and all that mm. malarkey. But we've used to, I was never a switched on as user at 22. Literally, I was like a a fucking different man. Yeah. Criminal, proper hood, nasty guy. So you are year, years ahead of me, man. Just double down on doing what's necessary, not what you like. Yeah. And don't listen to the people that will pamper to your ego. Listen to people that are going to tell you the fucking truth. Yeah. And hold you ransom to it every day. Then you can't go wrong. Well, that's one thing we do to each other. Yeah. Good. Good. The outside of, because yeah. th this is your comfort zone. I wish yeah. I got given that advice when I was 22 because I got in my own way. Mm -hmm. You know so what I mean? So people from Thank outside you. that aren't scared to tell you the truth. Yeah, man. People that will expose you to levels. People okay. that will say, no, that's not good enough. There's more to do. Mm -hmm. Why are you setting low expectations for yourself for? Yeah. That, that's what you need consistently because otherwise we plateau and we get comfortable. Makes sense. Um, and when you reach a certain level of success, it's about making someone, holding yourself accountable to someone that's going to teach you about it, all the fucking egotistical implications that come with being wealthy. I never got taught about it, but I got humbled in my own way. Mm. You understand, which is another podcast. But I'm not yet to discuss that yet. Do you understand? So it's heavy, but understand that I think you just want to write your Thank you, man. Thank you. And keep you working us. It's fresh. Oh, I Thank love you it. So oh, much, I love man. the energy, man. Really yeah, we're so just, we're just us. Yeah, I know you are, but the problem is you, when you don't brand and market yourself to push out there, yeah. you're giving people a just service because yeah. more people should be seeing you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get me? So if you just us, push you out more because yeah. more people enjoy it. Thanks, man. Thank no, you. My Thank you. Man. You're uh, happy, lad. Yeah? We, we both yeah, really man. appreciate you coming, Thank giving you us your time. We know you're a busy dude. On the way to hospital now to see uh, my fucking mum, eh? Yeah. I hope that everything's good. That's true. Well. Shit. <laughs> make sure that you, um, yeah, now nah, thank you as well for just all the kind words. Thank you for jumping on. And uh, make sure that you follow us on Spotify. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, like the video. Uh, five stars on Spotify is. Do all of that yeah. stuff, man. We've got to keep the lights on. Um, but yeah, everywhere we'll that you can later. find Reese will be in the description. And um, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Love. Peace.